It says, and one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceived that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any question. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we do give you thanks and praise for your holy word this morning. These beautiful, wonderful words of life that you have revealed to us. Father, we now ask that you add a blessing to the reading of it. Lord, that you would cleanse me of sin and empty me of self. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that I may be a blessing to these thy people this morning. Lord, we ask that we would hear from you, that I would fade from the back and that you would come forward because Lord, if we do not hear from you, we have gathered here in vain today. Father, may you bless this congregation. And Lord, if there is even one, Lord, that is not far from the kingdom, may today be the day that they enter into it gladly, seeing Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior, to be saved from their sin and made new in the likeness of Christ. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and all of God's people said, Amen. Go ahead and have a seat this morning. So as we talked a little bit last week, since the end of Mark chapter 11, Jesus has been in the temple. And as he's been in the temple, he's been taking shots from the Pharisees, the Sadducees, scribes, and the Herodians. And we ended last week by Jesus essentially telling the Herodians that they don't know the scriptures that they err greatly in understanding the resurrection. And so he corrected them on that understanding. But in verse 28 of our text today, we see that one scribe in the midst of all of the debate that was going on and all of the questioning that was going on, one scribe in particular overheard all of this and he perceived, it says, that Jesus was answering them all well. In other words, he was very impressed. And because of that, he decided to step forward and come with his own question. And his question, as we see in our text today, is which is the first commandment of all? Some of your translations say, which is the greatest commandment of all the commandments? Now, you need to remember, it's not just the ten, right? Off of the ten, we're built all kinds of other laws that went along with it to the point where there were about 634 Old Testament law. And he says, which is the first commandment of all? And just like he always does, and just like you and I should always do whenever there is a biblical question or a theological question or a stance that needs to be taken for the Christian, Jesus answers with the authority of Scripture. That is what we stand upon. That is what the truth is, our absolute truth in all matters of life and faith. Amen? Jesus sets that precedent, and he quotes Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we see him quote Deuteronomy chapter 6 in verses 29 through 31. He says, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. That is with all of your affection. And with all thy soul, that is with all of your being. 
and with all thy mind, that is with all of your thought process and capacity. Some of us that's greater, some of us that's less. But still all. I'm glad at least one person laughed. If you're offended, I apologize. And with all of thy strength, bodily power, all of your bodily power, he says this is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. But then he goes a step farther. Because isn't that like our Savior? When you seek him earnestly and you seek him for truth, he won't just give you the truth, but he'll give you a little bit more extra. And he goes the extra mile with this gentleman. It says, and the second is like it, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, for there is no other commandment greater than these. He said, these two laws, all of the laws, all 634 or so, hang on these. If you want to sum up the entire Old Testament law, you can sum it up in these two. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. And love thy neighbor as thyself. A couple of things I want you to notice real quickly about that, though, this morning is that there is an order to those two commandments. Notice, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength is the first and greatest commandment. It comes first. Second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Why am I telling you that this morning? Because there are a lot of Christians today who get those two backwards or think that they are one and the same, and they're not. There's a lot of Christians today who put loving their neighbor as themselves before loving God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. And that's where we get into the issue of where we will leave Scripture because we're trying to be nice and kind to our neighbor rather than to understand that we are to please God first and foremost and be committed to him. And sometimes loving your neighbor as yourself while honoring God isn't necessarily going to look like love to the world, but it is. Amen? Amen. Come on. After giving him that answer, the scribe, it says he liked Jesus' answer. I would hope so. He liked Jesus' answer. He said, you speak truth. Amen. Amen. You speak truth, Master. He agrees with him and even adds his own comments. He says, you are right. We are to do those things. And he says, it is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. In other words, it doesn't matter the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices that we are to bring unto the Lord as we should to love thy, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as themselves. That is greater. That is greater. And Jesus looks at the man, and he says something very, very Very profound, which is what I want to focus on in the message today. Because we could take our time like a lot of of times when you look at a passage such as this and talk about what does it mean to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. What does it mean to love your neighbor as yourself? But this is the one that jumped out to me. He looked at him and he said, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Thou art not far from... From the kingdom of God. Notice, even though this gentleman, this scribe, who would know the scriptures inside and out, that was his job. That was his life to translate and study the scriptures. Notice, even though Jesus was pleased with his answer and the scribe was pleased with Jesus' answer and it was put forward before them, Jesus didn't say he was in the kingdom of God, but he wasn't far which means there was still a gap. There was still a gap that had to be made up. What got this man close but didn't get him in? 
What got this man close but didn't get him in? You know, I see this man, and I believe it is a mirror when it comes to so many in our culture today. When it comes to so many, even perhaps in our churches today. We're right there on the doorstep of entering into the kingdom but we're so far away as well. Let's look at this man real quick. And I promise it's going to be quick. There ain't much to this message because it's pretty straightforward. Some of you are like, famous last words, Pastor. <laughs> look at this. He had the right attitude, church. He had the right attitude, this scribe. Verse 28 says he came inquiring. He was genuinely curious about Jesus. He saw Jesus put down all of these religious uh, leaders with truth. They were amazed with his answers. They could not respond. They were baffled by what Jesus was putting out there. He handled them well. And he saw Jesus and he knew there's something different about this man. I know all of my colleagues, all of my friends are after him and they're mad and they don't want him to be the one that is up and in front and leading these people, but I can sincerely say I noticed something different. He stepped out from the crowd to approach Jesus. He had his own question. He was searching for the truth, church. And listen to me, there had to come a point in your life at some time where you could hear everything around you. You could hear all of the philosophies. You could hear all of the studies. You could hear all of the research. You could hear everything that they would put on uh, social media. You could hear all of the experts as to where this world came from and what you are doing and who you are and what's your mission and what's your purpose. But at some point you had to hear the words of Jesus Christ and something in your soul stirred and the Holy Spirit said, there's something different there. There's something different. And praise the Lord, the Spirit of God said, search him out. And you followed. You see, this wasn't like the other religious leaders who were trying to trap Jesus, trying to disprove Jesus, trying to uh, put Jesus away. No, this man came forward earnestly, honestly seeking for truth, and he was unashamed to try to find it. You see, when you realize there's something lacking, and you realize that Jesus is the one that carries what you're lacking, you will step out from the crowd, you will step out from your family, you will step out from your friends, you will step out from the culture. Why? Because you know that he has the words of eternal life. He had the right attitude. He was thinking on his own. And you hear the words of Jeremiah the prophet. It says, and ye shall seek me and you find me when you search for me with all your heart. Oh, if there is something that is lacking in your life today, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, Jesus has the answer. Jesus has the solution. And if you seek him, you will find him when you seek him with all of your heart. Step out of the noise. Step out of the crowd. Step out of the culture. Step out of the studies. Step out of your education and move forward to Christ and you'll find what you're looking for. He had the right attitude. He had the right understanding. He had the right understanding. In verses 32 and 33, when Jesus answered, he recognized truth when he heard it. It says that he called Jesus master. That'd be pretty big for the scribe to do. He called Jesus master. It says he even agreed with him. You're right. None of the other Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians were doing that. 
They'd rather stand there in silence looking stupid than to admit that Jesus was right. Sometimes it said they stood there baffled. In fact, the end of this, it says, and they durst not ask him any more questions. Durst is King James Old English for dare. They dare not ask him any more. Why? Because Jesus was making them look stupid. But this man, this man said, you got it. You got it. That's right, Jesus. He then even took Jesus' teaching and answer and applied it. He said, he said, and all these things are more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. That to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more. It means more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. How is he applying it? In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, we see Samuel interacting with the Lord, and listen to what the Lord says. He says, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken that the fat of rams. You know what Jesus told the prophets in the Old Testament, would tell Israel in the Old Testament all the time? Stop going through the motions of fulfilling the law and bringing the offerings and the sacrifices without any love for me in your heart. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And you know what we learn later on from Jesus? Jesus said it himself, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. He doesn't want a robot. He doesn't want you going through the motions. That's not going to save you. That's not going to please you. He wants you to love him so much and recognize everything that you've done with him that you say his ways are the best ways and I'm going to lay myself aside to follow him because he has the ways of righteousness. I'm not doing it to check off a list I'm not doing it to say, hey, look what I've done. I'm doing it because I love the Lord and he saved me. He had the right understanding. It's supposed to be out of love that we come. And notice, ladies and gentlemen, he had the right mindset and understanding in it because it says that that Jesus saw him answer this discreetly. Discreetly. Let me give you the definition. He answered this separately. He answered this prudently. He answered this wisely and with good judgment. He answered it avoiding errors or evil, selecting the best way or means to accomplish a purpose. In other words, he answered it discreetly. In other words, he was able to think for himself. And not be a part of the group think that was the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians, and the other scribes. He came to this conclusion independently and on his own. Led by the Spirit of God. A light bulb went off. A light bulb went off. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, he had the right understanding. He agreed with Jesus. He agreed with the scriptures. He came seeking Jesus for truth. He came acknowledging Jesus had the truth. But yet Jesus looked at him and said, you're not far from the kingdom. He didn't say he was in, but you're not far. What's what's the gap? What's left? What's the gap? Because ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. We can seek Jesus knowing that something's lacking. We can agree with the scriptures knowing that it's true. But there's something else that's got to happen. There's something else that's got to happen. And here's what he didn't have. He didn't have the right heart. He didn't have the right heart. Jesus says, thou art not far from the kingdom of of God. What's he missing? Well, first you got to go back to his motive in asking the question. 
why would a scribe, after Jesus ran through all of the religious leaders, step forward and want to know the answer to this question? The same reason why the rich young ruler asked the same question in other Gospels. They want to make sure that they're getting to heaven. They want to make sure that they obtain righteousness. They want to make sure that they're on the good side. They want to make sure that they're covered. You see, he's missing something. He came seeking truth, Jesus for truth. He came acknowledging Jesus had the truth, but he could not connect Jesus as the truth. And that's what left him on the outside. But all of the evidence was there. All of the evidence was there. You see, he, he said, you're, you're right, Lord. Sacrifices and offerings aren't going to get us righteousness. Sacrifices and offerings aren't going to give us right, aren't going to give us, aren't going to get us righteousness. It's only a temporary cover. You're right, Lord. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and to love thy neighbor as yourself. You're right, Lord, but you know what should have been the follow-up question? How do we do it? Because guess what? Even in loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all thy strength, and with all your might, if burnt offerings can't keep it, listen to me, even doing that can't keep it because you know what you're going to do in doing that? You're going to fall short. There ain't nobody here this morning, including that scribe, that can love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And there is nobody here this morning that can confess with a raised hand without lying before the Lord and other people that you truly, in all circumstances and in all ways, love your neighbor as yourself. We all fall short. It's why the law could only condemn, folks. The law can't save the law could only condemn. He says, this is the first and the greatest commandment, but it still isn't enough. He got his answer. But his salvation and his entrance into the kingdom of God was standing right in front of him. What was missing? His profession of Jesus as the truth. His profession of Jesus as the Messiah. Now we don't know what kept him from it. Why all of a sudden Jesus' answer called him to back off and no other questions were asked. We don't know if maybe down the line he came to understand and made that decision and came to that realization. But listen to me folks, he didn't hear at this matter even though Jesus' love fulfilled the law, and he was the perfect lamb of God in sacrifice to take away all the sins of the world. The fulfillment of both of those things that were brought up was standing right in front of the man, but he would not bow the knee, so to speak. He could not bring himself to do it. And Jesus could only come up with, you're not far from the kingdom. You're not far from the kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. You can make all the sacrifices and offerings in the world for God and still be far from the kingdom. You can give not just 10%, but 100% of your salary and still be far from the kingdom. You can serve on every single board there is and go on every single missions trip that there is and do so much good for humanity and still be far from the kingdom. You can go to great lengths to love 
the Lord your God. You could show up in church every single Sunday and praise and raise your hand in the sanctuary. You could go to church every single Sunday and serve in Sunday school, serve in smalls. You could be a part of every single ministry of your church, listen to me, and still be far from the kingdom. Why? Because your salvation is not based off of your offerings and your sacrifices and your love for God. Your salvation is based on recognizing that you could never fulfill the need for righteousness. You could never pay the debt for your sin. Therefore, that Jesus came and he was the perfect lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice. And in God's love for us and Jesus' love for us, he laid down his life. You are not saved on your deeds, your offerings, your sacrifices to get into the kingdom. You are saved on the deeds and the works and the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And all you got to do is say, I cannot obtain my own righteousness, Lord. I am a sinner and my good deeds, as Scripture says, are as filthy rags. But Lord, your work is perfect. Lord, your work is complete. And I humble come before you and I lay my life down at the foot of the cross and I ask for that blood to run over me and cleanse me and wash me because without you Lord I am nothing I am nothing that's why the apostle Paul said by grace are ye saved through faith not of works lest any man should boast If it was you that saved you, we could start a nice little tear on that back wall. Well, this person does this, and they're closer to God, and this person does this, and they're... No, your works are only going to get you so far, and there's always a gap. Jesus is the only one that can fill that gap. But until you come before Christ and acknowledge you're a sinner and you cannot save yourself, and that he is the answer, that he is the only way, the only truth, and the only life, and that no one comes to the Father but by him. Until you reach that, you can sing until you're blue in the face, you can give until your pockets are empty, you can serve until you got no energy left. Listen to me. You're still going to be far from the kingdom. You're still going to be far from the kingdom. That's why in Matthew 7, When those people come before Jesus, they say, Lord, we prophesied in your name. Lord, we preached in your name. Lord, we did all of these great works in your name. And Jesus looked at them and said, away from me. I never knew you. It's because it's not based on you. It's based on your faith in him. And you surrendering your life to him. So the worship team gets ready to come back up and play. I'm telling you. Told you. See? You're like, hold on, pastor. You still got the conclusion. <laughs> Listen to me. I, I said it earlier. Listen. I don't know what the scribe ever did with this information. I don't know if he was satisfied with just being not far from or maybe he connected the dots later on after Jesus died and rose again. Maybe he connected the dots. Maybe he filled in the gap. Listen, I I hope so. I hope so. I hope there was a reckoning one day. But it says here that there were no more questions. There were no questions more questions asked. Listen to me, church. You have all the evidence. You do. And if you sit here this morning and you tell me you don't, it's because you suppress it. He has given us every single thing we need to believe on and confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Especially the book that you have either on your laps or on your app 
one ever. It's all there. The only thing standing between you going into the kingdom of God and staying on the porch and being not far from the kingdom of God in a lot of ways is your own pride and your self-righteousness. Thinking you can do it on your own and you can get there on your own. We still have this idea in our minds and in our culture that when we die, we're going to stand at the pearly gates and St. Peter is going to have a nice scale. And if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, he'll say, go on in. But if your bad deeds outweigh your good deeds, there's a trap door right underneath of you and down you go. It has nothing to do with your deeds, church. It has nothing to do with you, praise God, because if it did, none of us would be saved. And listen to me. You're here this morning and you know that you're saved. Praise God. Listen to me. It works the same way after your salvation. Once you're saved, your salvation isn't keeping it isn't dependent on you. It's dependent on the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you are signed, sealed, and delivered unto the day of redemption. You cannot lose your salvation. I don't care how you feel about that. Pastor, I don't feel like I'm saved. Praise God, your salvation is not based on your feelings. It's based on the knowledge of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. got all the evidence. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, that's me, pastor. I've never laid down my life for Jesus. I've never professed him as Lord and Savior of my life. I've never made that connection. You see, folks, there's a lot of people in the church today, listen, that they're going to miss heaven. They're going to miss heaven. Not by much. They're going to miss heaven from the distance from their head to their heart. Because they had the right mindset, they had the knowledge, but it never got here. Y'all, that was my testimony. I grew up in church. I graduated from a Christian school. I had the gospel preached at me all the time. I could tell you the Bible inside and out. But I didn't realize that I needed a Savior, that Jesus, I knew who Jesus was, but he didn't know who I was. I didn't realize how that knowledge applied to me and I didn't see myself in that role because of all these things that I did and who I was and what I did and what I was a part of until I was 19 years old. Praise God that he let me in his mercy live to be 19 so I could come to that understanding and I could be saved. And if you're here this morning and you've been playing church and you've been doing all these things and you recognize you're far from the kingdom, God has had mercy on you to keep you alive, to get you to this moment to respond. What are you going to do with his mercy at this point? I hope you don't walk away. But I hope maybe you come down to this altar during the final song and you seal the deal.